I say TP, you say D, TP. Joking, joking. <laughs> right, so uh, I just want to do a bit of a proviso first. Um, I'm just to make the, uh, I spend too much time on the internet looking at stuff about vaping. So the following isn't um, an industry view or it isn't an official view, it's what I've picked up about the new ECIM legislation. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be picking a few things out for TPD and explaining what I think they mean. Um, then I'll be saying what's actually happening in some places around Europe because it is quite hard to believe that this will actually happen. But believe me, it is happening. And then uh, finally, I'm going to give you a few things that you can actually do to try and help all the people that are trying to fight it. So, this basically sets out what the EU have said that the UK have to do. Now, if you're not aware, it's a law that's come from the EU. So, um, the UK government has been given a certain amount of time up to, that's why 12 months is there, up to May the 16th next year to actually write the law and have the law on the statute books and that law has to conform to what the EU said which includes all those things. So I'll pick a few things out of it. The UK has to have written its law by the 16th of May next year. Once that law is in place, uh, all vendors and it's the law about what you can sell, all vendors will have 12 months to comply with that. So according to the law as it stands now, we've currently got two years in which we're able to buy some tanks, you know, lots of it for England's hand mill and all of that. So we've got a minimum of 12 months, the government could introduce the law tomorrow, and we've got a maximum of 24 months to do something. Now, one of the weird things, now there's many, many, many weird things about the TPD, but one of the weird things that shows that they do not understand where we are coming from is that the EU is actually going to design the leak-free refill mechanism of the ATI. They've con contracted it out to a private company who are busy now drawing up plans for what our ATIs are going to look like. So one centralised ATI in one design and like, yeah, it's going to work, isn't it? <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's what's going to be happening. One uh, interesting thing in how they've written it, again, it was a really rushed piece of legislation. What happened was that um, EU, this is a personal comment now, and it may or may not be true, but I believe in response to heavy farm lobbying, the EU wrote down that E6 should be made medical devices, and only companies with medical authorization, pharmaceutical companies will be allowed to make them and sell them. Well, vapors across Europe wrote to their MEPs and said they didn't want it. The MEPs voted it down in a historic vote in the EU. They actually listened to the people and they said, no, we're not having it, sent it back to the EU Commission. Well, what the EU Commission then did in the space of a few days and behind closed doors, no publicity whatsoever, is rewrote it and the law that came back, that the MEPs then voted for, looks very much like medical uh, regulation and one of the things which means we know it was done really quickly is it talks about um, two millilitres volume. It says that your atties have to have a volume of two millilitres. Now I'm a science teacher so I know that volume means the size of something. It does not mean the capacity of something. So it doesn't say that you can put two millilitres of liquid in your atty. It says that your atty has two millilitres of volume, the space it takes up is two millilitres. So the law as it is written means less than two millilitres. Plus they've got to fit that leak free refilling mechanism they haven't designed yet inside those two millilitres too. Um, I'm indebted to Asita who do some really great work with spreading out information for this point. Uh, it says, the TPD says, um, if it's likely to break, then that's not allowed. It's got to be designed to be breakproof. And that means that uh, glass tanks are very unlikely to be allowed to be sold. I'm indebted to Dave Dawn from ETTV, who's done a lot of work spreading the word for this bit of information. Um, 
I'm on quite a few forums and Facebook groups, and I basically 100% DIY my own liquid as well. And I, you know, I like it and it brings taste in that. But the EU legislation never talks about e liquid. Uh, never talks about juice. What it talks about is nicotine-containing liquid. And all the laws that it makes are laws about nicotine-containing liquid. So when it says that no one will be able to sell you more than 10 millilitres of nicotine-containing liquid, that includes the 72 milligrams per milliliter nicotine concentrate I buy, which I currently buy by you know, 500 millilitres at a time. 10 millilitres, that's all I'll be able to buy in the future. Effectively, DIY, gone. Um, they have this limit of 20 milligrams per milliliter based on an idea that e-liquid is somehow super toxic and having more than that is somehow dangerous, even though they say if you've got a medicine's license, you can sell it over the strength of the line, subject to the legal limits of nicotine in that country. And the only place uh, where I've seen this 20 milligram talked about was in a paper by Dr. Farsalinos, where he was actually looking at the levels of nicotine it would take for a recent heavy smoker to be satisfied by an electronic cigarette. And he said in that paper that if you're a recent heavy smoker and you come to eat music and you want to get similar amounts of nicotine in your bloodstream, then it has to have a strength higher than 20 milligrams per milliliter. And that suddenly became, somehow, a limit of 20 milligrams per milliliter. Um, Dr. Barcelinos actually wrote back to the EU after this came out, saying, look, you've misused my science. That isn't what I was saying at all. As far as I know, he didn't receive a response to that. So there are, I mean, what I've done there is I've just tried to pick out a few things from the TPD that are sort of a little bit hidden at the base lines. The, uh, the poster we've made has any more detail, hopefully you've had the time to read it by now. I mean, one of the things, it doesn't like immediately say something like, well, you know, I, I, I run quite a successful small business, I sell thousands of bottles of juice a year, and I'm doing very well, thank you. It's not going to affect me. But the thing is, um, for each of your juices, you have to have an expensive toxicological report. Uh, one thing I haven't touched on is that anything you want to sell, you will have to tell them six months before that you're going to sell it. And uh, that has costs as well. So uh, when the law actually comes in, and this is the situation in one of the other countries, the law comes in, nothing can be sold until six months after because you've got to tell them six months before. So you've got this period of limbo in which nothing can be sold. So that is a summary, I hope, of some of the things that the EU is going to have to write into law sometime in the next year, uh, and that's going to come into force. And I also see on the forums, and I have this feeling myself as well, it's ridiculous, it's absurd, it's not going to happen, how can it happen? Because it's really shocking that it should happen. I refer you back to my previous comment about the farm lobby. But I'm afraid it actually is already happening. So uh, there's a little map of all the countries in the EU. These are all the countries where this will happen. Denmark. They've got... And, uh, the, the countries have more restrictions than these. I've just picked out a few. Adban. Interestingly, the reason why Vapors in Power was formed, the reason we're here, isn't because we want to stand for election and we want to get into Parliament. It takes political parties 10, 20 years before they get enough traction to actually get candidates. No, the reason Vapors in Power was formed is because there's a clause in the TPD that says, I cannot either intentionally or unintentionally promote e cigs in any way on the radio, on the telly, in the papers, on the internet. Which is absurd. It's a gagging order that's banning free speech. And our founder, who's very clever and likes to think about things like this, realised that actually the EU laws of the freedom of expression of political parties and the EU laws of freedom of association of political parties, meaning uh, who you can talk with, trump that law. So if the banning order does get written into the UK law, as it has been written into the Danish law, then um, 
e-liquid companies and e-cig companies will not be able to promote their stuff. Vapors in power, however, will be able to promote their stuff. And it is entirely likely that a vendor in association with Vapors in power will be able to talk about their stuff. So as an aside, that's why we're here, that's why we started up. All the, all the campaigning, all the standing for election, that's kind of like a bonus. So yeah, Denmark's got it. If you are a Danish maker, you live under these laws now. Same as in Holland. I picked out a few different ones. Now, in, when they wrote the law in Denmark, there's a thing with TPT. It says every time you take a puff on your EC, it's got to give you the same amount of nicotine. Which is the sort of thing you write if you're a pharmaceutical company making drugs, where you need your paracetamol to have a certain amount of paracetamol in it each time. Each time. But if you're a smoker, or if you're a vapor, there is no way that you want the same amount of nicotine each time you take a puff on your EC. You want to turn it up, you want to turn it down. If you're like me and you use quite high strengths, in the mornings, perhaps sometimes you don't quite feel up to that. And it takes you a little bit of a while to gear up first. So Denmark ignored the consistent dose because there's really no way to do it. However, in Holland, this goes on at the moment, they have the e cig to be sold, it should be viewed a consistent dose of nicotine per puff. Again, the ad banner, again, 2 milliliter, 10 milliliter limit. Um, now, the things I've seen from Denmark and from um, the Netherlands do rely a lot on Google Translate. So, um, I picked out that in Denmark, Danish companies aren't allowed to export their goods, and I picked out in Holland that um, a Dutch vapor isn't allowed to import here. It may be that the laws are exactly the same, I don't know, that's just Google Translate. So, um, I don't want to just leave you with you know, depression, like, it's terrible. These things are happening, the future, you know, it's all, it's all going to go horribly wrong. They're taking my vape from you. Don't want to leave you like that, because there are things we can do. I mean, the fact, the fact is, is that laws do get changed. Politicians can't do anything. If they decide they want to change a law, they will change a law. So, I've picked out four things you can do. Okay, but before we get to that, that beer, just like the above. Oh, one other thing, you've also got to have medicines authorization if you want to sell an EC. So that's three countries so far, and all the other countries on that map will follow suit. So what can we do? Um, this page is just going to have a load of links on it. So once all the links are up, if you want to do any of the things, please take a photograph of the um, screen, or at any time, you can email me, Liam and Makers in Power, I'll give you all the information I can and any help I can. So the first thing that you can do, and this is a big one, this is one that has a real chance of success. A company called Totally Wicked are taking the EU to court, because that EU law breaks a lot of the European Union's own rules. So sometimes towards the end of this year, I think, Totally Wicked are going to be in the European Court of Justice arguing against the TPD. Now they've got a website that explains it, actually sets out the documents. If you're legally minded, they've got their case up there. But one thing they have got, they've got a button you can click, and it means that you can support their challenge. Now, the reason why they're doing that is if they can say in court that they are representing the citizens of the European Union, that makes their case stronger. So the more people who support that totally wicked challenge, the stronger their case is, and I strongly urge everybody here to support it. Right, number two is there is an organisation called the New Nicotine Alliance. Now you'll be hearing from them later, and these people meet with politicians and talk to politicians, and have done a lot of work um, behind the scenes that means the UK is really proactive and has actually got quite a positive and safe stance. And you can also support the NNA. If you go to that website and support them, then they, the NNA, when they meet with politicians next, they will be able to say, we have the support of this number of thousands of papers. And it gives them power for people that support them. Uh, again, again, apolog apologies for the links, basically. I'll try and explain what they are, but this is so you can take a picture and then go and do it at your leisure. On May the 29th, there is to be a demonstration across Europe. 
Um, countries like France, Belgium, Germany, Spain, they are brilliant at doing demonstrations. Unfortunately, here in the UK, not, not so much. But we are having one. We are having at least one. The one that we are organising at the moment, and it's a brilliant guy called Brilliant who's organising this, is in Swansea, 29th of May, 2 o'clock. All the details are happening. Now this one is ongoing and this one is super important. Over the course of the next two years, the more people that can be actually talking to their, their representatives, their MPs, the better. You email your MP, tell him you're a constituent, put your postcode in it, he will reply to you. You can reply to him. Just have a nice, little, gentle, ongoing email conversation about you being a vapor, how brilliant it is, and how awful the law is. So, um, it is about law, I'm sorry about that, but there are things you can do. Thank you.
we hit one of our main girls' goals pretty early on. The delightful Jasper Hamill did a piece featuring the party in the mirror. Now, he's probably not the first journalist that we would have chosen, but we pretty quickly learned that we didn't really have a choice. We had to take every single opportunity that was offered us. Our goal was to get the other story about vaping out there. Not the formaldehyde, not the exploding batteries. Um, and to be honest, a poll with 88% of respondents saying that they would vote for vapors in power was not to be sniffed at. In Bristol, we had a fantastic campaign. And Liam here worked his socks off. He made the most of every opportunity, talking to the local vape shops, attending two of the hustings and talking to the local people, to the local politicians. Now those politicians are not going to forget that vapers feel strongly enough about this to actually do something about it. A copy of Liam's leaflet, designed by Daniel Pitter, was delivered to every single voter in Kingswood. And Liam also met And I've completely lost track of where I've gotten to. <laughs> he also made it into the local paper with an article about the TPD and how that affects the economy. And he also made it into the Guardian with an article about small parties and independent candidates where he was directly quoted. In Barnsley, we had a late start. The awesome Billy as a student and his end of year exams had to come first. But when he did hit the trail of campaign trail, boy did he do it with a bang. In his constituency, there are over 20 vape shops. And he visited every single one with leaflets, badges, and messages about what the TPD really means. His leaflet, designed by Chris Burks, was then distributed from all of these drop-off points. He also worked hard on the local pubs and working men's clubs talking about the local voters getting our message out there. He was published in the newspaper with a piece, perfect piece, about why a young person aged just 19, just 19, that's how old Billy is, would choose to stand for election in regards to vaping. The two constituencies we had were very different. This was never going to be a one-size-fits-all. So, you know, it was just a matter of working with what we had in the area and getting the most of the details out there. Alongside all this, we ran a social media campaign. If you've come across Vapors in Power on Twitter or on Facebook, odds are you're talking to me. <laughs> with that, we worked really hard on it. We made most of everything that we could possibly do. So we were tweeting daily, all the things we could get out there. We've obviously got the poster that Liam was using. Um, we had a little bit of fun with Billy, with the uh, Billy fandom. That was quite entertaining. Um, and we also did uh, press releases to all of the national media as part of this. So, what votes did we get? I'm delighted to say that our Liam in Bristol got 49 votes. And then Billy took the lead with 103. Did you think we'd get more? We didn't. This was never about the votes. It was never about that sort of thing. It was about making an impact on every single person that heard the name Vapors in Power, that saw us on Twitter, that saw us on Facebook, that went to those hostings events, or read our name in a newspaper. That's what we were achieving. And it's not over yet. We have more plans with more ideas and more projects. When the next cabinet is finished being selected, I don't know who the health minister is going to be, but I doubt they realise that they've got a target painted on their forehead. We'll also be continuing with our call to action. Every week, full of ways that even the busiest of us can get involved and make an impact on the future of vaping, not just in this country, but across the world. Oh, and if you live in Wales, if you think you make the grade with your commitment, your dedication and your sheer insanity, there is another election next year.
perfectly timed for the introduction of the uh, TPD. We will be there and we will be heard. So on a final note, I'd just like to say thank you again. It's been hard work, it's been one hell of a steep learning curve, but it's also been worth every single minute of it. None of it would have been possible without the awesome thing that is the vaping community. If you helped fund this, you made a difference. If you shared or commented on one of our posts, you made a difference. If you add me on a forum and you put up with us constantly posting in the wrong place and our blatant sales promotion, you made a difference. And if you actually voted for us, you made one hell of a difference. So thank you very much and watch this space. Oh, thanks very much, Abby. Um, now we're delighted to be able to present to you um, one of the members of the new Nicotine Alliance who is uh, quite in five minutes. There will be another talk by one of the members of the new Nicotine Alliance who have uh, managed to appear on the Today programme on Radio 4 and have met with politicians and have done a lot of work for us. So I hope you'll hang around and come back in five minutes to listen to that. Thank you.